So in this video, I play one of my most memorable Title Tuesdays ever. I played countless grandmasters, including a former world women's champion, and also some guy named Nepo. So I had a lot of instructive and fun games. I really think you'll enjoy them. And as usual, all the games will be timestamped in the video description, so feel free to hop around at your leisure. Now, before we get to the chess, I do want to give a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Babbel. Now, if you haven't heard of Babbel, they are a language learning app that makes learning new languages fun and simple. And just like chess, learning a new language can help you connect with people from all over the world. There's over a dozen different languages you can learn using Babbel, and it teaches you real world practical conversations, help you in business, travel, and even relationships. Now, recently, I've been using Babbel to learn Bahasa Indonesian. I went to Indonesia back in 2017 and 2018, and it was a really fun trip, met a lot of interesting people, but I really wish I had Babbel back then to learn the language and more easily interact with the people who I met. And with Babbel, the lessons are very digestible. Every lesson takes no more than 10 minutes to complete, and it's super easy to do every day to learn something new and just enhance your understanding of a new language. So if you're interested in trying out Babbel and learning a new language, then I do have a special offer for my viewers. If you click the link in the video description, you can get 65% off your subscription to Babbel, and I really hope it makes a positive impact in your life. So thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video, and now let's get to some chess. So addressing all the subs and donos might have to wait until after this game. And I'm probably just gonna stop looking at chat because now I'm playing Nepo. I'm playing Nepo? I'm playing the World Championship Challenger. Let's play a London. Oh, I'm playing Nepo. Ah, he's playing this line. Okay, so I usually like to put the bishop on c4. I think I'll play h... Uh, I forget my prep. Let's play knight d2 first and then bishop c4. It allows d5 but then bishop e2. It's not the most like impressive opening prep, but it's something. Can I take? Rook b1. I should really know what I'm doing here, but I don't. Is slightly unfortunate. I think I'll just castle. Queen b6, I think I'll take. Yeah, that's a move. Oh, this is my game. Oh, no, it's not. You see, three takes, takes. Ah, uh, bishop b5. Maybe bishop b5 is the way to go. Hey, it's GM Bonnie. Thanks for the raid. If you're just joining, I'm playing Jan Nepomniachi. Some chess player from Russia. Okay. Uh, C3 is a move. I think C3 is reasonable. I mean, he can really get my... <laughs> uh, both my bishops. We, we could have a situation where it's two knights versus two bishops. But at least I'm achieving some, like, solid formation. Not too far down on time. That's a good move. e5 might be coming. Takes, takes, e5, c4 in the end. There's actually queen b3 in that line. So the point is, if e4, I take it because there's a pin. If that move... Yeah, it's not the prettiest of positions. This is just bishop e2. Maybe rook d1. I mean, these pawns can be strong, but they can also be potential targets. Objectively, I'm probably a little bit worse. Put the rook. I, mean, I don't want to leave my thing undefended, though. Bishop here. Discouraging a4. Maybe I'll play a4 myself. Okay, do I want to play f3? Maybe it's not too bad. Queen b6 check, king here. Okay, now queen a4. Down a minute. I forgot Nepo likes to move quickly. 
He also likes to think not at the chessboard. <laughs> at least during the World Championship match. Okay, I'm just trying to hold my own. Oh no. Okay, I have to play c4, only move. It doesn't look good. But takes, takes, maybe it's playable. Wow, b3. Maybe queen c2. Keep holding. Holding or hodling? Thank you, Psychedelic Gazelle. Okay, idea a4 and then c5. I have to over defend the bishop so I can mobilize my c pawn. And the thing for black, once I get rid of this pawn, I can establish a. Never mind. Uh, if I take. What's the point? We trade? My knight will land on f1. Uh, I'm losing b2 in the end. But I might be mating in the end. Ooh. Okay, so I have this move. Whoa, both my pawns are hanging though. So b3. Okay, there's one second increment. If b5, I have bishop d3, thankfully, defending. <sighs> Still trying to survive. Wait, I'm up a pawn. I didn't realize he sacked a pawn. I'm still under a lot of pressure, though. What happens if I just take this? No, that's hangs a thing. A4. <laughs> H, no, not H3. A4, pro, no. Under a ton of pressure. Knight G3. I think I should make Luft first. That's really weakening though. Yeah, there's this idea now. At least the Night Guard's H2. I should have played Queen E2. Queen E2 might come next or come very soon. Now I want to get the Queen to the. Wait, now I have this move. I just want to trade and not lose. Trade. That's such a tricky move. I think it's okay though. Just have to set up a blockade on C2. I couldn't take a C2. Now there should be D5 coming. Okay, thankfully queens are off the board. I do a king d3. Now bishop d5 and takes is the plan. A little bit nervous here. My knight here is a... I'm also preventing bishop c6, which is nice. Uh oh. oh. I'm still okay, I think. To stay calm. Oh, I'm still on Leech Ass. Ah, I forgot to change my title. Sorry about that. Don't hurt me. Stop trying to hurt me. Check. I'm looking for a win. <laughs> Might be taking some risk though. Idea this.
No! What's happening here? Am I still winning? Might still be winning. No! What happened to my thing? <laughs> I free moved the wrong move. Oh, I'm so sad now. Oh, I'm sure it was, was it winning? He tricked me once and then he tricked me twice. What's the saying? Shame on me? I couldn't play this because Bishop A7. Yeah, he probably said, oh no, my pawn. And then just won my knight. Yeah, it's hard to advance. Yeah, a7 was a bad pre-move. I was expecting him to play h2. Um, yeah, if I just take here, 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 uh, it's some endgame calculation. But I shouldn't be worse. It should just be a draw. That's so sad. I'm sure it was winning at some point. Like, I'm up two pawns. I just had to... Play like Magnus Carlsen, probably. At least I'll have a lot of pictures of Nepo to use in the thumbnail. I took I took thousands of pictures of him in December in Dubai. <laughs> World Championship Challenger versus Photographer. Okay, that was a good game. Yeah, I'm not sure if I played Nepo before. I feel like I have, but can probably check. Not sure if he has a public Lee Chess account though. Also, let me change my Twitch title. Oh, thank you mods for changing this. Okay, opponents giving me time to meditate or giving me time to interact with Twitch chat. Yeah, I'll have to check my uh, my stats against Nepo at some point later. Okay, so my opponent gave me time odds. Um, I think I'll play d4. Carlson played some similar move against Nepo at some point. Then c5, going for reverse Benoni. Yeah, bishop e7. And then knight d7, I believe. The whole idea is to get an e5. And I think one, I guess bishop f4 is playable. There is some plan of uh, f6, e5, but bishop f4, I can't play f6 because rook e6, I think. I only have this move. Well, maybe it's playable. Yeah, so very typical a3 was preparing b4, so I prevent it. Okay, e5 will come. Yeah, white has a slight uh, space deficit, but we have a very uh, kind of thematic Benoni structure. And white does have some nice peace harmony. But, okay, I have a solid center. G4. Like a G. I think rook E8 makes some sense. And idea is this and maybe eventually that. I'll start with this. If my G3, I think G6 is called for. So unlike last game where I was down a minute, now I'm, okay, let's not plunder a pawn. I'm up a decent amount of time here. I'm just bishop here. Reroute the bishop, over defend the pawn, because I want to mobilize a knight. White's trying to hurt me. I mean, it looks pretty, but I don't think I 
get two damage after after h5. And now because a pawn is here, I can happily play a bishop here and not be uh, disturbed. Uh, this doesn't pin anything. A4 looks pleasant. This is another typical Benoni idea, or anti-Benoni idea. Um, yeah, just kind of playing positionally against the queen side. And now this pins something. Getting another scam call. Uh, decline. Enough to, to focus on here. I think queen d7. Okay, this pawn's a target. I don't have rook a5. I have bishop g7. Rook e7. Another idea is to put the rook here and go for b5, which looks interesting. But it requires moving my knight somewhere. Maybe my knight can maneuver like this. Yeah, I think this look decently controlled. Oh, f4 might be coming. Uh, bishop f5. I think bishop f5. I do kind of concede the light squared bishop, but this bishop's not so impressive. Oh, now it's more impressive. So I'm a little bit pinned, but this pawn is a little bit pinned. I'm still up about a minute. Things are going to explode very soon. Maybe queen c7. It's interesting. Getting out the way of the bishop and aligning with the king. And diagonals are important. Yeah, now the rook has to retreat and um, e4. Maybe I take and then play e4. Takes and then e4. Yeah. Pawns are happy. Knight's happy. Bishop's happy. We can take this thing now. Yeah, I'll go for complete paralysis. Knight have 3 is probably coming because there's a pin. Or that move. I have knight c1. Also just have this move, I think is simpler. So now there's no more pin. And now I'll play knight c1 and maneuver to d3. And take this with check. Bishop f8. Yeah, I can trade a little bit. Defend the pawn. Uh, choices, choices. Maybe first check, force a king to decide. Now d3. And next move, I'll take the pawn. Okay, no more fooling around. Uh, check, there, there, there. I mean, there's so many ways to win this. I'm just trying to find the cleanest way. Probably this move. Distracting the rook from the third rank, or from the first rank. And now there's a mate threat. Okay, I think that was a pretty clean game. A lot of uh, like middle game central tension. Um, I mean, we were still deep into the middle game, and all the pieces were still on the board. Like we only had one trade of pawns up until move twenty four. Okay. Uh, London served me well the previous game. Hey, it's Hannah. Welcome back, Hannah. Also, shout out to Hannah. Appreciate the resub. Hope you're doing well. And thank you, Banff Blake. Yeah, there's really not too much time between games. I guess I've had a couple of long games so far. Uh, yeah, we're going into mainline London. H5 is kind of the trendy line. One of the trendy lines these days. 
So we'll see how much my opponent knows here. G4, H4 is uh, one of the more aggressive lines. H5, I believe Bishop G5. Bishop G5, Bishop F6. Um, I, this line is actually fresh in memory. I uh, prepared this for a few opponents in Gibraltar as one possibility to go into. Um, yeah, so the main line is queen b6 and bishop f6, at least according to my notes. Uh, there was a recent game, maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago, uh, between Aronian and Duda, and the game went queen b6, bishop f6, rook h7. Aronian played g5, but the improvement is knight f3, idea knight g5. So it seems like my opponent, my opponent is out of prep here. Um, and yes, I will still be doing Gibraltar recap videos. Uh, I tried to explain it or explain things in a, a YouTube post. Also, there is a Reddit thread. I got a bit burnt out during the tournament and then uh, then got really busy with like, traveling. And I'm still recovering, recovering from jet lag and a cold. But uh, hopefully this week I'll, uh, I'll get into a zone of recording. There's still a lot of interesting games to review. Bishop e7. I don't know if I had studied this move. I mean, this move looks enticing. Just bishop e5 immediately. I'm calculating a bishop here takes, and then whatever takes back, I have queen f3 hitting f7. Generally, f6 doesn't work because it takes and I hit the rook. So we'll just go for this. There's castling, but castling just seems to walk into a massive attack. In castling, I'll play bishop h6. Hey, it's Scrabble. What's up, Scrabble? Shout out to Scrabble. If you're just joining, this is chess. Kind of like Scrabble, but a smaller board and fewer letters. Also, thank you, Fly Salas, solving over 20 months. I actually haven't played Scrabble in a, a little while. I've been playing a lot of Wordle, though. Maybe I'll do Wordle after, uh, after this tournament. Because I haven't done today's daily Wordle. Okay, Bishop H6, I think I just play. So I am allowing black to take what looks to be a free pawn, except nothing in life is free. Thank you, Jean Penu. Hey, it's a wanderer. Ah, wanderer says, I was talking about how annoying it is to be asked my favorite word in Scrabble. Actually, like, that sounds like a, a, a decent question. But it is annoying to be asked what my favorite chess piece is. I've been I've gotten that question a few times throughout my life. Okay, what to do here? It seems close to crushing, but it still takes work. I mean, I want to take and take, but I don't want to give up the bishop too soon. I think I just take here. Because if knight takes, I win the exchange. If pawn takes like at the G file, black is really suffering here. Oh, if wait, yeah, if knight takes, I win the exchange. Maybe there's something better. Considering, uh, let's keep things simple. King probably has to take. Queen takes, I win the. Actually, bishop was defended. Um, yeah, no need to be fancy here, rook g1. Maybe I will still end up being fancy. But, uh, up material. d4. Interesting move. Let's play... What 
to play queen g4. Not exactly what I wanted. I mean, I'm up to exchange for a pawn. To be careful of bishop f3 in certain cases. So probably, oh, let's not play that move. Maybe this move. Okay, threatening rook h8. Now the five's coming. So let's play rook h7. Idea knight c4 to d6. Did I just miss this move or that move? I do have this move though. I think it's okay. The takes I take with check. Rarely my pieces are coordinating well. Okay, so I could take the rook, but if I take the pawn first, I'm probably just stronger. King has to move here, and then... Oh, then I take here with check. Oh, no, I don't, because I can't move back, because my knight's attacked. So let's play this. I have to take with knight, I guess. And then take the pawn. Okay, let's not flag. A4, safety first, take a free bishop. Simplify. Ah, I had c4, okay. Which is not stalemate. I'll allow the queen. Where's my mate? There's my mate. Okay. Oh, not sure if that was the cleanest finish, but it was a finish. I like the opening. Um, yeah, I have a very extensive London file somewhere on this line. But uh, yeah, Bishop B7 was a bit new for me. Okay, playing Igor. I'll stick with my London. Thank you, Bitcoin boy. Rice pudding, welcome back. Okay, London again. This is a trendy move order to delay knight f6. Um, there's cases where there's some early queen b6 or some f6 even ideas. Or bishop g4. So, uh, yeah, I'll play c3. So knight of six, we would transpose into something. I think I'll just take and play queen a4. There's a funny line, knight of six and then bishop a6, which is winning for white. Wait, is it winning? I think it's winning. Wait, no, it's not. I'm getting confused. Okay, here I can take with knight. Ah, because we already traded on, D on d6. Yeah, bishop a6 is only winning when there's still tension. Okay, so bishop b5, here there's 97. If I play knight b5... Looks interesting. Knight b5... Not sure how much that does, though. Is queen d7, queen f4, e5, queen g5, bishop g6, I have three f6. And I have c4. Hmm. Oh, there's a funny line here and here. And h5. Maybe I can play this right away? Let's see. Uh, let's see what I can make up in this position. The idea is to play G. F Never mind. Okay, now I have this move because there's no 97. I might just be winning a pawn here, actually. Thank you, Steven. Yeah, I'm winning a pawn, but I'm probably falling behind some development. Okay, let's see what happens. Up a pawn. 
Uh, probably knight, knight b3. Looks to be okay. If a5, I have queen a4. It's weird to have the pawn in h4, because not sure if I should be castling here. Maybe I should have played a4, knight b5. Yeah, rook c4 is coming. Then queen a3. Thinking f, no, f3 is bad. Man, I don't know what to do here. Queen a3 immediately. I have this move. Doesn't do much though. Or does it? Oh, it's interesting. I want to play it. I don't think it's good though, but I don't think I can resist. So on one hand, I could take the pawn. On the other hand, I was calculating knight here, here, here. Takes there's a fork. It looks really awkward for white, though. Yeah, I don't know about this. Oh, let's try. Interesting. I still can't play f3. I'm about to flag too. The f4. At least I'm still up a pawn. It's my only advantage here. Idea 95. Not so optimistic about this position though. Queen a3, idea 97. Good move. What to do? G4. Let's go crazy. Oh, I didn't see that idea. I have to take. Oh no, that's defended twice. Wait, I have this move though? Takes, takes. I have two seconds left? What? I have three pawns for the piece. Ah, e3 is hanging. But these two things are hanging. Ounce of hope. Or a kilogram of hope. That's not what my king wanted to do, but what were the other options? I should have played king d3, I guess. Oh, there's queen b2. I was losing regardless. What to do? Oh no, my king. That went downhill really quickly. Yeah, I have some vague memory of this g4. Because the queen, there's like funny tactics, but let's see what the engine thinks. Is there any trap here? Bishop, oh, bishop a6 here. I know bishop a6 is an idea in like the other line. Wow, so here it's actually playable. Because it kind of wins a pawn. Bishop a6, rook b8 takes takes and then takes and if wait if takes 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 wait this is it says it's better for black oh knight takes e6 ah knight takes e6 and queen d7 wow queen d4 getting out of the pin and hitting g7 and knight b4 will block the the file okay what to do Lost another game to a GM, also from Russia. All these Russian grandmasters beating me. Oh, I played Drev. Oh, I didn't know that was Drev. Oh, I thought his name was Igor, but it's E Grok. Yeah, Alexei Drev is a uh, decently well known and strong grandmaster. 
I actually played him over the board in Philly in 2015. And I drew him. Actually, I, I had like really nice opening preparation against him in 2015. And uh, yeah, that tournament was my, I got my final I am norm there. Okay, I'll be right back. I have to cry a little. Okay, playing someone rated 1900. Uh, we might have a stonewall coming. C3, yeah. How do I play against a stonewall? I wonder if I can like play bishop g4 and try and disturb. I've never actually looked into like this specific move, but it looks okay, because f3, bishop h5. Okay, 92, interesting. Might as well take and play some normal developing moves. Yeah, and I have fours probably coming. I don't mind though. It feels like kind of a reverse London. Got the open H file. Also kind of feels like my game with Nepo in the first round, uh, but a slightly better position for me. So there's e5 here, which maybe there's some logic to. e5 seems counterintuitive though. And rook c8 is non-committal. Then bishop goes all the way back. Very simple idea of building a battery. So here we see white's stonewall formation. Put a pawn here. Yeah, this could be a slower, like, maneuvering game. My plan is this and this and this. Maybe tickle the kingside squares. Ooh, okay, my pawn can become more centralized. Yeah, I think we're headed towards a very positional kind of, uh, yeah, more like an endgame battle. I think black is slightly better just because I have a, a happier bishop. Even though the bishop doesn't look so impressive, most of white's pawns are fixed on dark squares. These squares are covered by my knight. If I play king e7, there is bishop b4. King f6. Um, still probably worth going for. Yeah, so I connect my rooks, bring in the king. Maybe some point I can get the king diamond, or the, the pawn diamond around the king. Yeah, here probably we trade. Bishop here. Okay, it's still a question how I try and win this. I, mean, I have some positional edge. There's b5. Rook c4 is an idea. g5 ideas. No, I'm moving a little bit slowly here. Having b5, bishop c5. Doesn't look so great. I think I just play, oh, there's this idea too. Okay, I think I'll play rook c4. I spent a long time there, but I think we're gonna get a position where a lot of moves will be pretty straightforward to play. b5. Bishop b6. Idea a5, rook c8. Thank you, cool grapes. And e funnel. And indela c or laura. Always a difficult name for me. And I'm down a lot of time. Okay, the king wants to come here and then eventually here.
what to do. I just got to move quickly. Put the bishop back. It's really hard to gain time with a one second increment. I got my pawn diamond. I'm trying to figure out the plan though. Maybe the plan is to put the rook here and then go for this and this. Thank you, Vegas Subby. Okay, now I can switch gears and target the somewhat backwards pawn. If king g2, I have king e4. Diamond is very sturdy. It might get scratched a little bit, but it still has the spirit of a diamond. Okay, what to do? a5 now. Uh, let's play this. Yeah, the king is so, so happy. Uh-oh, white wants to mate me. Okay, white was threatening this and mate. That's the danger of being overly happy. Emotions can change really quickly. Okay, if I get the pawn to c2, it should be winning because bishop a3 is now an unstoppable threat. And seven seconds, not much time, but it's enough time. There's White and Zugzwan. Yeah, I'll just simplify a little bit. Okay. It's fun having so many pre moves. Okay. That was a pleasant game. Yeah, the uh the positional issues for white, they stemmed from the opening. It stemmed from white having the inferior bishop. So basically what happened this game, not to oversimplify it, but white just had a less useful bishop, and I was able to work my way on the light squares. Um, maybe there are some missed opportunities, like maybe White could have played a4 at the right moment, but overall, I think that was a, a feel good game. So I'm 3 out of 5, playing someone a bit higher rated, fellow I am. Ah, oh, another Russian. I've only lost to Russians so far. Let's play. Let's play chess. Preventing c4. Yeah, on passant. Castling. I think knight d7 is one of the main ideas. Because if, if this knight moves to d7, I, there's knight c6 to worry about. Looks like a somewhat dangerous position, though. Who takes, takes d4. Looks interesting. Knight moves or c5. The nice thing here, the bishop is blocked by the e-pawn. So there's not the typical Catalan pressure. I have this move. 96. 96 I can take and play e5. Yeah, I really can't complain here. So I think black has slightly better pawn structure, but it's still imbalanced. It's going to be a fight. Knight's going to try and maneuver to c4. Try and pressure the b file. Threatening a6 to win the pawn. Which, can I just win a pawn here? Knight a3, oh, ooh. I mean, this I saw earlier. I think I can just, wait a minute. Yeah, this looks to be okay. 
Because if rook c5, I have queen d6, attacking, defending, defending. Otherwise, if bishop moves, I win the pawn. Ah, there's queen c2. Or there's that move. Okay, it's never so simple. So that was a trade. B2 still hanging. Oh, do I want to take it? Probably. There's might be four. I take B2, Queen C1. Rook B8. It looks reasonable. Yeah, I'm thinking the bishop will develop to b7. The rook will eventually have to move to c5, I think. Wow, queen c5. I don't really want to play. I mean, this is a major threat, actually. What do I do? It should be seven, I guess. It's not pretty, though. Maybe it's OK. So rook here, I have queen here hitting the bishop. Idea, maybe now to get a rook to c8. The taking doesn't work. A a4 is also hanging. Maybe I can take and defend. It looks shaky though. Let's do it. It's hard for white to actually remove my queen. Now I'm up two pawns. I have this move to force a queen trade. There's some eventual bishop e7 to worry about, but I don't think it's a huge concern. The rook's in the way. Ah, rook c1 is a uh, consideration. I mean, still, maybe I can take... Uh, what to do? It's really not so simple. And taking rook c8, I guess. And bishop d4, I think I just played this. Bishop d5. It's a little bit scary. At some point, I probably have to lose back a pawn. But I'm just trying to get a playable position with the time situation. Ideally, I'd like to set up with this and eventually move the knight and trade rooks. A lot to ask for, though. Oh, there's rook d7. d7, we trade. Oh, dear. I think I'd play this first. Looks really, really scary. So I'm allowing rook f7, but after king f8, or king e8, I'm still alive. There's also a line like bishop moves, bishop moves to c1. I don't know what's happening. I know I want to play this though. Bishop a3 is kind of hurtful. This move? No. Oh, it's very hurtful. That's a really strong move. I'm just losing. Or am I? I'm taking this. There's a weird line. Bishop b7, king a, bishop b6, take on e4.
Uh, also this line, yeah, white's winning this. I'm still gonna try and create tricks though. Really? Let's try this and take. No, I'm getting a lot of pawns here. I think king d2 is meant, maybe not. Almost flagged there. No, my pawns. Ah. Yeah, I'm praying for some miracle here. Probably not happening. What to do? Oh, my time. Yeah, I was already losing. Yeah, bishop a3. I saw the idea. I thought I, I was in time to survive. Also, thanks so much for the raid, Adam AK. Raiding with 504. I appreciate that. Shout out to Adam AK. If you're just joining, I just got crushed. The bishops and rooks were too powerful. So I wanted to take... Well, what do I want to do? Oh, I wanted to play this move. But then there's takes, and then takes, and then my thing gets tortured. This is actually forced mate. It's double check, only legal move, and then mate. Uh, hey, I'm playing Duck's Paradise. Uh, that sounds like a fun username. We can get some quacks in the chat. I have to quack at my opponent with the London. Oh, also, uh, yeah, there's no prediction right now because I think G Cook left. But G Cook said that if there's any other mods here, feel free to run predictions. Yeah, so Queen D2. Um, I know this is a, one of the top engine recommendations. I think the idea is just a castle. I also have 95 though. I mean 95 makes more sense. Stay a bit flexible. So I leave the bishop kind of in no man's land. Some idea of playing f3. Also bishop to d3 is interesting. Oh, can you not run... Predictions on mobile. Yeah, if you're a mod, you might have to be on desktop to run predictions. Okay, 97. I think this position calls for more positional chess. Takes, takes, never mind. Rook C1. Okay, some confrontation. There's a few, a few things to capture here. Nothing looking too attractive, though. We'll keep it uh, very peaceful. Take probably this move. So I get a little bit of initiative. I'm giving lack of choice where to put the rook. I was thinking bishop e5, but... Might be worth going for some trades first. Yeah, I'll start with this. No reason to take right away. 
this move. Yeah, that allows queen h3. I want to play knight e2 and get some trades, but there's knight e4. Queen d3. There's f3 too, maybe. Yeah, f3. It's a move I should have played really quickly. It's so typical for these positions too. So I restrict the knight. Idea 92. We'll trade and maybe, maybe there's some very small advantage. Also some ideas like, okay, never mind. Focus on the king side first. If we trade. Oh, a little bit too slow here. I'll play rook c2, idea rook fc1. B3. So I'm down about a minute. Oh, that's annoying. I have this move though. That's going to be really annoying. I think it's kind of weak. I have to take. I do have bishop at six though. Bishop weirdly holds things together. So 22 seconds. I have some idea of g4, like g4, g5 maybe. It's risky though to leave my king a little bit naked. Okay, that I'm happy about. We can trade king f2. Uh, okay, we'll trade g3. Very little time, but I don't think white should be worse here. g4 doesn't quite work. Let's try this. Oops. Okay, some idea. Yeah, let's go for this and then H5 should fall. Just living on increment. The knight's really out of play here. My king is on the good square too, because knight can't easily check it. Oh, that's a good move though. This. Eh. Still playing for a win. So I have the double duo of passers. Wait, double duo? Or just a duo? Double duo would be like four. Here we go. The triangulate ones. Oh, that was probably a bad decision. Oh no, my knight. Uh, 
Okay. Wow, what a game. It's hard to play and talk while being a little bit congested, but uh Okay, got the job done. Um I didn't flag. I was really close to flagging, I feel like. Yeah, night endings are tricky. Nights in general are very tricky. Yeah, I think Black should have... Should have played this move. And I then I just lose my beloved H-Pawn. And I'm definitely not better. Oh no, not another Russian. <laughs> oh, the Russians have beat me every single game so far. Do I play Stafford? No, I promised to play Sicilian. The one, like, viewer from earlier. Ah, this line. Oh, I should have played Knight F6. I don't know this line. I assume this is a move. Knight C6 coming. E5 a move. So I prepared, like, a whole new black opening repertoire in Gibraltar using Sicilian with d6 on move 2 which I had never played before previously um, this looks reasonable for black though g6 first some bishop h6 weirdness might consider like here bishop h6 some queen a5. I just want to try it. Let's try it. Bishops usually don't develop to the square. Usually you fiend keto, but... So the idea... What is the idea? Queen a5. The idea was to prevent the bishop from developing to b2. If knight c3 and then bishop g7, if that I just take and play knight f6, I think. And there's knight, knight b4 loses. Okay, knight f6. Thank you, the shadow wizard. Uh, so I can't take because of the thing I just pinned. Uh, b4 is probably coming, so I should probably castle. And maybe my queen will dance to the fiend kind of square, like this and this. I'm also thinking that this trade is reasonable for me. If h3, I don't have to take it right away. But I don't mind the position. Okay, time is looking close to level. Oh, uh, what to do? I should move quicker. Yeah, the point, like, the goal is to try and damage the white pawns somehow. Where's this move? I think the queen is slightly happier here. If I do target d2. There's cases where maybe I'm just threatening to take. And bishop takes a 95. If knight takes, I win the pawn. Thank you, a broken cord. A broken record. <laughs> a broken cord. Wait a minute, can I just take? Yanni Pani Mayu. Uh, do I just miss a d2's hanging? Yeah, white didn't see my arrow. And now I can take here. I also have rookie 8, but... This is where I take my time and just make sure I'm not going insane. Uh, this looks reasonable. Uh... 
There's actually a line rook takes queen c3 hitting the rook, but also threatening rook e8. And then there's some uh, funny mate. Like rook e1 and then, yeah, rook e8. Rook e8's just winning. It's a moment where it's okay to like think for several seconds because yeah, opponent just resigns. So the point is that if like queen just moves away, I uh, I take, take, and mate. Very typical uh, puzzle rush idea. Okay. So, um, what to say? That was a nice game. Hey, that's my first victory over uh, a player from Russia. It's also my first upset victory. This whole tournament, I've been losing to higher rated players and been losing to higher rated players from Russia and then beating lower rated players. So I broke the pattern. Oh, the psycho says, I sent a cheer a moment ago. Hello, Eric. I'm still a beginner in chess. I have a decent understanding of early game control in the center, but wondering what to do once the game is over. Wait. Oh, once the early game is over. <laughs> once the game is over, you can either celebrate or cry. Or is something in between. So basically, what to do in the middle game. I find mid game is where I struggle the most and is where I lose most games. Should I be looking for pieces that are hanging, set up attacks? Yeah. Um, first of all, the middle game is a very broad area of chess. And every middle game is different. Uh, generally, you want to be working to... Obviously, like you should always be looking for either tactical opportunities, hanging pieces, opponent's threat. Um, I'll probably use some advice from Agard. Let me just make sure a game hasn't started. No, we're still waiting. Um, Agard gives like very good advice, which applies. The advice I think is intended for like very strong players, but it can apply to, to anyone. Is there's usually three questions you should ask yourself, and that should guide your, your middle game strategy. Um, one question is, uh, what are they? What's the opponent's threat? And do you need to deal with it? Uh, what are the weaknesses? So what are the potential like squares or pieces you should be looking to target? And then last question I like uh, is what is your worst place piece and how do you improve it? And if you start asking yourself those questions then Sometimes uh, finding the answers can be the easier part. Uh, so maybe I'll try and apply some of these concepts in this game. Uh, yeah, e5. So we're following my game against Hikaru. Never mind. Hikaru played knight fd7. h3 is common, preventing bishop g4. Okay, yeah, this is some line. I think ninety four and takes and uh, this pawn's attack. So rookie one. Yeah, so that was like, what's the threat? The pawn wanted to take. I have to defend. That question alone will can uh, it can really help minimize blunders. So I still have some worst plays pieces. Maybe we're not quite in the middle game yet. I think my knight wants to be on f3. Uh, c3 kind of weakens d3, so I think knight d2 is the way to go. I'm playing Manchuk. It sounds like Ivanchuk. Who is this? Oh, P Manuel Petrosian. Or Petrosian.
Okay, knight f3. What am I do e6? Another thing to look for in middle games is like ways you can create weaknesses. Very often pawn breaks are a good good type of thing to look for. Try and damage the pawn's position. Bishop e6 prevents that. I think I'll play bishop f4. Reinforce. So I develop my final minor piece. Now I want to bring the rook into play. Rook d1 is a natural move. I'm actually thinking knight g5 here. Because I want to provoke some beneficial trade. Yeah, the concept of trading pieces is another like very important area or like thing to always be considering in the middle game. Like what trades are beneficial for you, which trades you should avoid. I'm just trying to provoke black to strengthen my pawn structure a little bit. So now I restrict the knight. 94 looks playable. And this is where I can start asking what are the weaknesses? Definitely this f6 square. So knight f6 is uh, some nice idea. Also, this pawn was just hanging. I should have looked at the whole board. But the king side looks uh, looks enjoyable to play on. Because if we if we end up trading a uh, knight for bishop. Then I'll still have my dark square bishop, and then dark squares will be really weak for black. And the eventual idea is queen g7 checkmate. Thank you, Jips. Subbing for half a year. Also, J Davis subbing for eight months. Only taking a lot of time here. Uh, yeah, I think this is the way to go. Black had to take now. Now it's a it's a mission for the queen. I mean, queen e three, and then bishop here, and then here is the the main plan. Um, but I have to be a little bit wise with how I do this. Probably start with no queen e three. There's knight d five. Start with bishop e5 then. Queen side down to c7. Now this move. Preventing queen c5, queen f8. Um, this calculation is queen h6, rook g8, rook d1. Idea to trade rooks and then get a rook to d8. That's... Looks pretty nice. Another idea, rook d4. Yeah, so I'm threatening rook d8. Was threatening. Oh, where's my mate? The thing is, g5's coming. I want to play rook d4, but I don't think it works. I have a funny idea of this move. I think this works. There's one second left. Yeah, now the knight hangs. I was starting queen g7 with a nice like queen sack for mate. Okay, that was pleasant. I feel like I applied a lot of the principles I discussed like before the game, like just trying to answer the questions. Um, and it was one of these like pleasant openings. Yeah, I think a lot of players would play Rook D1, but Knight G5 led to more progress. And then just improve the Knight and then the weaknesses were very glaring. There's a question from multiple people why I didn't play rook d4. Yeah, rook d4, um, it threatens maiden two. 
For example, if knight takes, then there's a very stylish mate. The reason I didn't play this is because g5. It's, it's a typical defensive idea. Okay, not only here preventing rook h4, but also enabling rook h6, or rook g6. Attack the queen, and I had to be really careful. c2 is also kind of undefended. So in the game... Yeah, I played h4 because it was uh, it was basically asking the same question is what does black want to do? And it looks like black just wants to take the bishop, but this isn't actually a threat because okay, I played h4 and if, if takes, I have rook d8. And this is winning. There's no way to stop queen g7. Um, so h5... My opponent had no time to think. Still play g5, I took, and again, the bishop can't be taken, because same idea. Okay, life goes on. Playing GM Becca. Oh, I'm playing Injic. I played Injic at the uh, collegiate, as a Pan American intercollegiate, uh, whatever tournament, back in 2016, I believe. He's known for playing like weird openings. He's probably gonna do some knight c3 stuff. Um, debating what to play here. Take some bishop f5 maybe. I usually don't play this move order, but I think it's okay here. Yeah, now knight c6. You have queen b3, there's queen b6. There's also queen c8 here if I want to be extra safe. There's also this move too. I'm realizing oh, queen b6 should be fine. Because there's a line like takes, takes, bishop, c7, but I have knight d7 defending the pawn. There's still some lingering tension. Knight h4, very reasonable move. Play this. Oh, I don't want to trade off the bishop pair. Also, I have to just move quicker. Okay, make things a little bit imbalanced. So if takes, I think I take with pawn. Restrict the knight from coming back. F3 is a move. Bishop g6. Oh, safe travels, Irene. Irene, uh, hope your travel's going smoothly. Okay, so this is a move. Idea to fork. Oh, I've made this whole, I've made it this whole stream without sneezing. But now I have to kind of sneeze. Or maybe not. I don't know what to do. Bishop d6, and there's c4. Maybe it's playable though. With c4, I have some knight b4 move. I'm preventing knight f4. Okay, this is playable. Oh, there's also this move. I'm trying to calculate. Actually, I think this is okay. So the calculation was takes, 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 and I take and hit the rook, and I think it would be tied down to the bishop, so there's no castling. Did you get sick traveling? 
Uh, no, I I was completely fine until I got back. And I just have like a, a common cold, I think. Um, I spent too much time in the cold a couple days ago. Okay, let's try and focus here. 93 is a good move. Okay, not the most pleasant structure. White has a bishop pair too. Try and make the most of it though. And I hear f5 ideas. Bishop c7. Okay, I'll take bring the knight back. I'm not entirely sure what my plan is here. I should ask myself the questions, maybe improve my worst place pieces, like my rooks. Another question to ask is like, what's the best square on the board for my knight or my both my knights? I'm not sure. D5 maybe. Uh, knight's coming to B5. Yeah, opponent's doing a better job at answering these questions. Maybe g5, gain some space. g4 ideas. Improve the king. We'll have to be careful putting the king where it can be targeted. I think I'll just hold my ground for a bit. Yeah, this could be an idea. My rook should be on c1 though, or c8. Can I do this and this? Probably not. Uh, I feel like my knight should be on c6. White's knight is coming to c4 and then e5. Means my bishop should come back to e7. Okay, then I have to watch out for the f file. Maybe my knight should be here. Really unpleasant to defend this. Bishop c2. I want to play this move. No! I saw my time. I was too slow, though. Ah! Oh. I got the f4 square, too. I should have... Uh, if I have time, rook h8. Black should not be worse. That's so sad. You check the final, the the evaluation of the final position. Maybe white's still slightly better, actually. Yeah, white's slightly better, but rook h8 is a move to play. I'm just too slow. What to do? Good game though. When it comes to suggesting moves, I guess generally you shouldn't suggest moves when there's still a game being played, but these turn oh, I'm playing Kostinyuk. In these tournaments, uh yeah, I'm I'm not really looking at chat. You definitely shouldn't suggest like moves in a sub alert. I guess that's the right etiquette. Okay, it took me eleven seconds to play C5. Let's try and regain some time here. Kustinyuk is a former world women's champion. We played a few times before. You know, one time I played her, she fell into some Stafford Gambit trap. But no Stafford Gambit today. Uh, C4 is interesting. 
Yeah, I might be walking into some weird like opening prep here. They get some position with a bad bishop. I think I have to castle. There's king e7 too. That might be five could be coming. I wonder if I can just play b6. Hold off on making a decision what to do with my king. Because my b5 seems a little bit over ambitious. We'll see. The goal is to just, uh, yeah, complete development. I'm allowing b4, bishop e7. So I'd probably end up casting very soon. There's knight d6, yeah. Oh, I'm getting outplayed, kind of. White's getting the bishop here. Not the end of the world. I should probably take and rook d8. Thankfully, white can't double up. So maybe I can take over the d file. There's some 94 idea. Very positional game. Any four doesn't seem to do anything. Also thinking a five, kind of interesting. A five bishop c three though. But then ninety four. This is a positional idea. the The, the goal is to provoke b five and then secure a, a nice outpost on c five. The problem is white might be able to get away with this and have some bishop d four. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Bishop d4, I have uh, knight d7, defending and controlling c5. As usual, down a lot of time. So knight e5, I want to play knight e4. Oh, I miss rook d2! Oh, but then she had rook d1. Okay, maybe it wasn't a big miss. I should have considered rook d2, though. That's a very simple fork. It's still kind of looming. Knight c5. Yeah, I definitely, there's like some, okay, never mind. So here I probably should take f6. It's a little bit clumsy. E5, probably. Knight D3. I'll play E5. My pawn should be on dark squares because I have a light squared bishop. My only bishop. Okay, I'm going to get my bishop here. And then redevelop my knight. Only square to develop to. Knight d5 would be an interesting decision. King f7. So if takes, I have g6, king g7. Yeah, f4. Hmm. Probably worth taking. It seems wrong, but I do this and this. Though maybe I keep my pawn f6 and just kind of chill. Oh, there's f5 though. But f5 I take. h5. I have to be really careful. I think f5 and then f6. It does allow takes and takes, which gives way to passer, but I think the pawns are vulnerable in some way. So I don't know what my knight's doing there. 
Okay, so we get this position. Yeah, I, I thought the um especially the C pawn is a long term target. Maybe I maneuver to d6 and I have two pieces always staring at c4. I don't know what my plan is here. The plan should be not to flag. To watch out what she's doing too. Where does my knight want to go? My knight has mobility here. Into F6. Almost no time. Use some bishop here and here and there. H5 maybe coming. Maybe not. Because G5. The G5 should be fine for me. Bishop F3 is probably coming. So I have knight g4 check. That's a good move. So what is this endgame? c4 is a bit weak. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. I think. Or am I? Oh, I'm in trouble. Or am I? Takes, takes. Oh, I'm in trouble. Ah, oh, she outplayed me. Any stalemate ideas? No. Well played. I got ground down. Uh, resign? Resign. Ah, uh, that was painful. I guess I allowed h5. Maybe I should have played h5 myself. It didn't cross my mind. h5 allows a knight to someday maneuver here. Yeah, it's still unpleasant. Um, I think actually by the time we reach this position, it's very close to lost, lost for black. So the, there's two passers and this pawn isn't dangerous. Was that the, that wasn't the last round, was it? Oh, that was the last round. Oh, the tournament's over. Okay, well, time to, time to go cry, I guess. Oh no. Ah, I have to identify boats. Not this again. Aren't planes just boats of the sky? Anything can be a boat if you believe hard enough. Next. Ah, there's more boats. Okay, boat, boat, boat. 